Hi, my name is Mike. I'm the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills. I want to welcome you here this morning. We're doing something a little different. We're continuing to experiment as this situation evolves. What we want to do today is we want to just invite you into this time. We're going to do a little teaching time, a little prayer time, a little worship time. One of the things I've always wanted to do was just to be able to sit in front of the sanctuary with a cup of coffee and just work with people in the Bible and understand that together and take some relaxed time to sing with our worship band. That's what this time is going to be. Just to give you a little update on where we're at as a congregation, we're continuing to monitor things closely. As of right now, there's nobody in the band, nobody in, excuse me, nobody in the office except for a band and a few people here. We're just trying to follow the governor's directives and keep everybody safe. We've got a number of online options available for you. We're going to have a Sunday morning worship service that will be live-ish online at 9.30 a.m. Sunday. We hope and pray that you'll be able to join us for that, online only. And we are continually trying to figure out how we can be more of a presence online. And we've got a number of things I'm really excited about that I'm not quite ready to share with you yet. But soon, and very soon, you'll hear about all that. If you have a kid in Sunday school or confirmation or or high school, we're continuing to figure that out too. You could get, excuse me, you should have gotten a email with some of the Sunday school resources, and so you can just work through that at your own pace. There is no pressure. Find what works for you and your family. We will be available for that. And we're going to continue to figure out stuff with Google Hangouts and YouTube and do all sorts of fun stuff. It's just a good day to be here. So I want to be thank you again for joining us today. It is a beautiful day here in Wisconsin with the rain that's going to be coming down. And now I'm going to turn it over to our praise band, and we're going to worship together. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain. Thank you.
Thank you, band. That was great. I was um, unpacking a bunch of boxes the other day. For those of you who are new to our channel or new to our congregation, we just moved here to Wisconsin from California. And you know how it is when you're unpacking stuff, you find all the things you had forgotten you had. And I had this book that I had found as I was unpacking, and this had been sitting on my bookshelf for about two years. It's a, about a battle in the Vietnam War, and it was written by the same guy who wrote Black Hawk Down. And this had been on my list to read for a long time. I had uh, picked it up a couple of times to get 50 pages into it, and I'm like, I do not have the time for this. Because as you can see, it's a thick one. It's good, but it's dense. It's thick. It's a good book. And I was thinking about that the other day, like, hmm, maybe global pandemic when we're all in lockdown. That might be not a bad time to catch up on that one. And we all have those things now, and, and life is just so thrown into chaos. Some of us have more time on our hands. Others of us are running around crazy. I've heard from a number of parents who are like, we're getting 30 emails a day from the schools on stuff we're supposed to be teaching. And I don't have no idea how I'm supposed to do this. We're all dealing with the changes, and we're all dealing with our schedules and our routines being just thrown out the window and being run over by a train. And so we're getting to this point of, what do we do with it? And that's what I want to take a couple of minutes for you. I want to take a look at this passage out of Psalm 46. And I love this passage, and I just want to share it with you and pull a couple of things out of it for you. Psalm 46, to the God, of, God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of sea, though its waters roar and foam, the mountains tremble at its swelling. Now, depending on what you're reading for a different translation, there's this word in here, selah. And nobody's quite sure what it means in the Hebrew. But there's a lot of thought that since this was a song, this was a thing that was meant to be sung, that selah is a breath mark. And it's beautiful just to think, as, as the author of the Psalms is writing this 3,000 years ago, he's talking about the mountains being moved into the heart of the sea, the waters roar and foam. And there's that mark saying, take a breath. This passage continues to go on. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her. When the morning dawns, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. And here's the part I really want to focus in on. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He has brought desolations to the earth. He makes the war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. That line out of Psalm 46, be still. And know that I am God. On some level, our heart aches for that. Our heart aches to be able to just take a deep breath. Friends, I got to tell you, when everything kind of came to a head Friday, Saturday this weekend, last weekend, I just put in all the time, and we were in crisis, crisis, crisis mode around here and getting things figured out and emergency meetings with council and teleconferences and staff, and how do we adapt to all this? I was fried after a couple of days of that. And I know I'm sure a lot of you were too, trying to figure out, especially switching in schooling and job, and we're all trying to adapt to working remotely. I was talking to staff yesterday, and I said, look, you know, I'm seeing out of California, they're going to shelter-in-place orders. We need to be prepared for that contingency. 
And we're all trying to figure out what does it mean to live in this, to live through this. And in the midst of the chaos, we might have more time. We might not be able to do anything. You might be trying to think, how am I going to handle my work from doing work from home? And at the same time, I'm watching my kids. At the same time, I'm trying to teach my kids. You might not have any time to spare. How do you wrestle with that? Be still and know that I'm God. I want to give you an idea. And it's not mine. It's a very old practice. In fact, I was looking to see if I could find the last time I'd done this. You just take a notepad. And all you do is you just start writing and praying at the same time. It's a very old discipline. But it's one of those things where science is trying to catch up with us on. Because you're seeing a lot of this stuff about distraction and how we get... We get pulled in 18 different ways, and your phone beeps, and you do this, and somebody interrupts you, and everything else. We live in this distraction factory. How do we focus? How do we be, dis- how do we be still and know God? What we can do is sit down and write our prayers down. And frankly, I don't think there's a better time to do that than a global pandemic. It's not like we're all going out for lunch together. This practice helps us to focus on who God is. And I started doing this back when I was down in Texas. I'll admit I've done this on and off, more off than on, but I'm thinking I'm going to pick this up. But all you do is you just start writing down your prayers. And it gives you a chance to just think and to slow down and not be distracted by things. And I'm going to give you two different ways to do this. The first is there's an old formula. I don't know how old. It's been around for a long time. But it's called ACTS. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And you simply write down. You start out with adoration. Okay, God, I know you are God. You are the God of the Bible. You are the God who has been here around forever. It is writing down our praises. It's the same thing that the praise band was doing, except in written form. Taking that time to focus and remember the character of God and remember who he is turns our heart in a new direction. We're so scattered and go here and there and everywhere, and it feels like you can't get a breath. But to be able to write that down and focus it, Reminds us of the character of God. Reminds us of his grace, his power, his love. We go from adoration to confession. We confess our sins, our our shortcomings. And it's a time for us to be realistic in that. And I think writing those things down helps us. Helps us to admit our shortcomings. Helps us not to deceive ourselves. And don't worry, you don't have to share this to anybody. You can burn it when you're done. It's that simple act of writing it down makes you focus. And that thanksgiving, it's obvious. And now I know it's easy to get so wrapped up in all the stuff that's going in, all the craziness of the world and everything that's happening, but that's why we write down our thanks to God. To thank God that it could not have been worse. Friends, I, I, I've always been kind of fascinated by this whole pandemic epidemiology thing. And even if this is bad, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. And we can thank God for what we do have for everything God has blessed us with, for having a congregation here, for having this chance to gather online, if not in real, real world, and the fact that we can have all this stuff delivered. I know it's hard. I know it's not a situation anybody wants. But there is still so much that we can thank God for. And then, finally, supplication. And that is simply asking God, saying, God, I need this today. 
And when we ask for those things, I say we go back to how Jesus taught us to pray. Give us our daily bread. Give us what we need to get through today. It's a chance for us to remember that it's this day that we want to celebrate, this day that we ask for. Now, in this time, the other thing that you can do is if you don't want to do that, you know, try it. If you like it, great. If you don't, go back to another thing. And I was telling some people about this last week. You can pray through the Psalms. You just start out writing those things. Write what the psalmist writes. Just copy it down. Be still and know that I am God. And then just write your own thoughts and your own prayers in that. Use that as a prayer starter and say, this is the thing I am praying. Because no matter what you are experiencing, there is that in the psalms. It's partly why I love the psalms so much. You get this beautiful psalm talking about the world boiling and the mountains being thrown into sea, the nations being destroyed. And be still, for I'm God. Two, you get the emotions of the people sitting by the rivers of Babylon weeping. You get the joy of going to the temple. Whatever it is you are experiencing, it is in the Psalms, and you can pray that. Flip through that and find a prayer that fits who you are, and you can just flip and flip and flip and flip. There's 150 psalms in there. I'm pretty sure you can find one that works for where you're at. But that's what I want to encourage you to do today. Continue and take the time to be still, to pray, to know that He is God. Friends, this is a crazy world that we live in. And we don't know what next week is going to hold. We don't know how things are going to work. And that's, that's kind of why I'm being vague in what next week is going to look like online. Because I just don't know. Nobody does. But we can know that whatever happens, wherever the nations go, whatever the mountains being thrown into the sea, that our God is with us. And so let's pray. Lord, help us to be still. Quiet our hearts so that we can hear you. We can know you. Help us to take time as our schedules have been thrown into the blender. As everything that we have looked at has been changed. Help us to follow you. To be quiet. To be still. Help us, Lord to know that you are God, and you are greater than all the troubles of this world. Amen. I'm going to turn it back over to the praise band, and we're going to sing some more.
song. They asked me if Amazing Grace would be good. I'm like, you can never go wrong with Amazing Grace. I want to invite you back here on Sunday at 930. We are going to publish the next one, right? About 930, as close as we can manage that. And what we want to do is, even if we can't be together physically, we want to invite you to that time and worship and pray together as a body dispersed we can take the chance to pray together and love each other even if we can't be in the same place physically. We are knit together through what Jesus has done, not through us being in that same place. Sunday, 9.30 a.m., I'm going to take some time and share this with you. This is just a pitcher of water. This is the altar, and we're going to talk about what Jesus did with those two things back 2,000 years ago. It's a fascinating story. I'm really looking forward to exploring it with you. It is just one of those amazing pieces of grace that God offers us. And so let me close with these words, this blessing that Paul wrote to the church in, uh, the, excuse me, in the letter to the Philippians, that Paul wrote this 2,000 years ago. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're going to sign off here for today. We'll see you again on Sunday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.